Fora TV. The world is thinking. So we have two very different conceptions of freedom. The Greek and Roman conception, which says freedom means my obligation to participate in the public business. Freedom as an obligation. Freedom to serve the state. Freedom to be a member of a community. On the other hand, we have the Enlightenment conception of freedom, which says freedom means my individual rights and freedom from any kind of state control, which needs to be protected by a Bill of Rights and by fundamentally powerful separations of the state and the individual. These are both powerful views of freedom, but they are almost contradictory views of freedom. They are so far apart from each other that neither society, the Greek or the American, would see the other one as being in the least bit free. Now that's really ironic. It's really ironic that as free as each of those societies feels, the other one would say, you're not free at all. You're fundamentally lacking in freedom. For example, we would say about ancient Greek society the following. Women had no serious rights. How can you call that a free society? Women couldn't vote, hold office, or even own property in their own name. Slavery was a normal practice in Greek society. There was no Bill of Rights to protect individuals. There was no explicit, legally protected freedom of speech. There was certainly not freedom of religion, as we saw in the case of Socrates, who was prosecuted for not believing in the gods of Athens, and convicted and put to death. That's certainly not a kind of freedom we would recognize. On the other hand, if you put a 5th century BC Athenian down in America today, and he looked around, he would say, I'm sorry, this is simply not a free society. It has no relationship to freedom. You elect other people to make all of your decisions. You all sit here in Chautauqua or in Ithaca, New York, or wherever, and you have other people in Washington, D.C., and Albany, Sorry about that, but it's been a bad summer. <laughs> making decisions for you, or in Albany's case, not making decisions <laughs> for you. An ancient Greek would say, you're not free. You're sitting here with no control over important decisions, virtually no control. Furthermore, an ancient Greek would say, you're not standing up on public issues and addressing the nation, how can you consider yourself free? You hire lawyers to represent you in court. Ancient Athenians had a law outlawing lawyers. <laughs> that line always gets applause. <laughs> My daughter's a lawyer. It makes me feel bad that that law gets so much applause. We, we turn over our defense to a professional army, a professional army. A Greek would say, you're not free if you have someone else fighting for you. We require military service of all males from age 18 to age 60. Not reserve service, not the reserves, full military service. Be ready every year. So to an ancient Greek, American freedom is just sorely lacking in any significance. And America, to an ancient Greek, would be entirely undemocratic because it requires no direct service by its citizens.